In this tutorial, I will talk about user-defined processes or workflows. This is a very powerful and unique feature of AwareIM. It allows end users to define their own workflows at runtime. This feature can be extremely useful because sometimes developers who configure applications cannot predict how their customers will use the system. Some of them may have unique requirements which change dynamically. By letting end users define their own workflows, developers make the system extra flexible. Consider the following scenario. You develop an application that you sell and distribute to many different clients. 90% of the application is the same for all your clients. Yet 10% of the application is different because each client has some unique requirements. One solution is to build all these different requirements into your application, determine at runtime which client is working with the system, and then activate the functionality specific to this client. The problem with this solution is that very quickly your application becomes messy and hard to maintain. Moreover, if the requirements of a particular client change, then you have to change your application straight away. Another solution is to maintain different configurations for different clients, with each configuration slightly different from each other. This is even worse, because you will very quickly lose track of all your different configurations. There is another solution. Let the clients themselves develop their unique functionality. The changes that they make will be stored independently of your configuration, so you will end up with just one core configuration for all your clients. Each client will manage their own unique requirements separately from the core configuration and independently of other clients. This also gives them extra flexibility, because they do not have to wait for you to implement these requirements for them especially when these requirements change. Obviously, this requires the customers to be technically minded enough to be able to do this. Some of the customers are quite capable of doing this, but if they are not technical enough to implement the changes themselves, you can do it on their behalf. The important thing here is that these changes will be stored on the customer system only, and it will not affect the configuration of your application. The last solution is what the user-defined workflows feature allows you to do. Of course, this feature has to be used with extra care, because interfering with the default functionality of the system can be dangerous. Let's take a look at an example straight away. This is the best way to learn as usual. AwareIM has the library sample application, which allows users of the library to borrow library items, books, videos, and so on. When a user borrows an item, the system creates an instance of the loan object. This object captures the date when the item has been borrowed, when it is due to be returned, any outstanding fees, and so on. The loan object has the status attribute, which indicates whether the loan is outstanding or not. The loan is outstanding if its status is current. Suppose that we distribute this application to many different libraries, and one day we receive a request from one particular library asking us to add the functionality to export outstanding loans every day into a CSV file. This functionality is not present in the application. Of course, we could modify our configuration and send them the new version, but suppose our configuration is very complex and large already, and the requirement to add export functionality is very unique to this particular library. We don't want to add more functionality to our configuration, especially since it's very unique to one particular library. So we decide to use the user-defined workflows feature. For now, let's assume that our clients are technical enough 
and, they, and that they can use this feature themselves. I will explain what can be done if they are not technical a little later. For end users to be able to define their own workflows, the application must have certain menu items that allow users to activate this functionality. So our application must envisage the possibility of user-defined workflows before it is distributed to clients. The library sample application does not allow defining user workflows, so we must allow it. Once again, this is only done once before the application is distributed to clients. All we have to do is add some special menu items to our application. So I will open the administrator visual perspective and add a few menu items. I will create a special folder to hold all the menu items specific to user-defined workflows. I will call it Workflows. I will add the Manage menu item of the Manage user-defined processes type. This is the most important menu item. It allows users to create, modify and delete their workflows. I will also define a few other menu items here and I will explain their meaning a little later. So now the application the includes the user-defined workflows module and can be distributed to customers. Now we will put on the customer hat and pretend that we are using the system on behalf of the customer at the customer site. So now I am the customer logging into the application using the browser. I can see the workflows folder and now I want to add my own workflow that exports outstanding loans on a daily basis. What I need to do is fairly simple. I need to find loan objects in the current status and then export them into a file. So I choose the workflows command, select manage, and the system displays a list of existing workflows, which at the moment is obviously empty. So I click add to add a new workflow. I give it a name, category, make it active straight away and click continue. Here on this dialog I need to select the trigger when the process will be activated. Since we want the process to run daily at a particular time, we select process will start at the specified time interval. And now we need to specify the time when the process runs and whether it's going to run daily, monthly or weekly. We select daily here and uh, accept other default values. And this is where the user has to enter the rules of the process. Of course the user needs to be fairly technical and understand what rules are and how to work with them. AwareAIM offers a simplified user interface to rules compared to the user interface of the configuration tool. But the latter is also available for power users if I press this button here. 
For now, I will use a simplified interface available in this dialog. Here the user can choose conditions of the rule in this area and actions in, the, in this area. Our first rule should find the loans in the current status. There are no conditions, just actions. So I double click on Find Record and select that I want to specify a new query. The object I'm looking for is Loan. I want to define conditions of the query and the condition is value of attribute is equal to the attribute is status and the value is current. So our first action is ready. Find loan where value of status is equal to current. I click save and the system asks me to define another rule. We need another rule because we need to export the found loans into a file. So I select yes and choose export in the actions. I want to export the loan objects and I specify the path on the server file system where the outstanding loans will be saved. We don't want to define another rule, that's all we need. So we can review our process here. It has two actions, find and export. Now I click save and the process appears in the list of processes here. So now the process will run at midnight each day. We will not wait that long. I think that I should also be able to create this export file not only at midnight but explicitly whenever I want. To do this we will modify the trigger of the process. So I select manage, find our process here and select edit, then click on the change button next to the trigger. And there I tick the allow users to run the process from the menu checkbox. I have actually forgotten to add the menu item of the Run User Defined Processes type to the Workflows folder, so I have done this behind the scenes. This command allows users to explicitly invoke the processes they define, so let's do it. I select Run and then I can see our process here. I click OK and the process has been started. We can now look at the library folder and there we can see the file with the loans. So that's it. It's not too hard for some technical users. But suppose our users are not technical and working with the user-defined workflows feature is not something they can do. We still want to use this feature because we really don't want to modify our large and complex configuration for this particular and a unique customer. One solution obviously is to go to the customer side and do it there. Invoke this feature on their system and define their specific process. But you can also do it on your own system like we did it now. Once we implement our process, we can save it as a file with a UDB extension. That's how we can do it. We go to manage again, select our process and then click export and then this will save it as a file. Then all we have to do is send this file to our customers and ask them to import it by selecting Manage and then Import. Surely this is something they will be able to do. And after they do this, the process will start running on their system. Let me now quickly go through some of the other features of the User Defined Workflows module. As I mentioned before, Along with the simplified user interface to rules, there is also a user interface for power users, which is very similar to what the configuration tool has to offer. To use this interface, we will edit our process and we will select the Add Power User button 
to add a rule using this interface for power users. There we can enter the text of the rule in very much the same way that we do it in the configuration tool. And the context assistant below will prompt us for objects and attributes that we can use. For each execution of a user-defined process, a where I am creates an event which captures when the process has been run and whether it has been run successfully. I have added a menu item that allows users to look at these events. So we have run our process only once and here we have a record that the process has finished successfully and we can also look at the log if there was any error, we would be able to see why the error has occurred. Let's also have another look at the triggers of a process to better understand when we can invoke user-defined processes. So we go to our process again and click change to see the list of possible triggers. The first trigger allows us to, to execute a user-defined process when a particular object is created or modified. So the invocation of the process is like another business rule for the object. The second trigger is quite interesting. Unlike other triggers, it allows us to change the user interface of the system by adding a process to the list of operations that can be invoked when the user sees a form of the particular object or when the user is looking at the grid showing records of a particular object. This is a very powerful trigger indeed. And we already know about the next one, which is the scheduling of a process to run at a particular time. Finally, I wanted to show you the command that allows system administrators to set up the workflow module before it is being used by others. This is obviously for technical users who can operate the module themselves. It's called configuration. As you can see, the system displays a list of all objects, attributes, queries and processes here, and the system administrator can change access to these. This is how he can do that, ticking these checkboxes here. He can also provide user-friendly names if the names used by the developer are not very user-friendly. These user-friendly names will then appear in the conditions and actions of the rules instead of the names used by the developer. There are many other features in this module. Creation of custom email templates, copy-paste, failure handling and many others. You can explore these on your own when you play with this powerful module.